And if you would, our candidates, please come forward, grab a seat. Uh, we will give you a brief introduction. Uh, first of all, Kevin Cahill is the incumbent in the 103rd district. He is being challenged by Ulster County Legislator Kevin Roberts. In the 104th district, Frank Scartados is the incumbent. He's being challenged by Sakima Green-Brown, a former Poughkeepsie School Board member. Uh, we are still anticipating Claudia Tenney, who may be here this morning. Uh, she won the Republican primary last month against Independent Party candidate Chris Farber. And in the 102nd district also, I know he called and is running a little bit late, Peter Lopez, who has Saugerties in our county, is running unopposed. More information about all the candidates are in the newsletters. We left them on the table this morning if you want to read more about each of them. Um, and we want to thank our friends from the League of Women Voters for again helping us out this morning. Cindy Bell and Sally Colclough from the Saugerties League. Thank you very much, League of Women Voters. And Sally's got the stopwatch, so we'll be paying attention to you here today, Sally. Uh, have a seat, lady and gentlemen. No money. Sally. Oh, Sally. Sally. <laughs> so uh, here are, uh, have a seat if you would. The, uh, actually, we're going to have to pass the microphone down. It's going to be a lot easier that way than have everybody up and down and up and down uh, when we do the questions from the audience. We're going to begin with two minutes from each candidate, give them a chance to tell us a little bit about them and maybe more specifically what towns they represent in our county. As you know, we do have four assembly members that represent a portion of Ulster County. We have four New York State Senate members that represent a portion of Ulster County. So two minutes for an opening statement from each candidate, and after that we'll focus on questions from the audience. And if you have not seen them, there are some index cards at your tables and pens, so please write legibly, doing questions that can be answered by all the candidates. So but please, uh, nothing specific about one, but specific, you know, questions that every single candidate can answer. Uh, and those are also going to be two minutes each. Uh, questions on index cards will be reviewed by the League of Women Voters and then given to me to read. They are just to be about the issues in the campaign, and please write legibly. Speaking time will be monitored by the League of Women Voters. So we will begin with our first two minutes uh, with Mr. Cahill. Thank you, Mr. Todd. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Cahill, and I'm running for re-election to the Assembly for the 103rd District. That uh, consists of a significant portion of Ulster County and two towns in Dutchess County. Um, we had a pretty productive year this year and last uh, since the last time I got a chance to talk to you. We've done some things big and small. We've done some things local and statewide. We've added uh, just this year alone over a billion dollars to education funding, an increase of about 5%. Uh, we, we passed a budget that included uh, the revenues that we received from the federal government to help us recover from uh, the Superstorm Standy and also was uh, we, we were able to qualify Lee and Irene for some of that money, and, and that is still in process coming back to the communities. We're very grateful for, to the federal government for that, but we desperately need it to get back up on our feet again. Uh, I've been chairing the insurance committee for the past two years. We've had some uh, pretty remarkable successes. We've, we've taken on the legislative role of the, uh, the rollout of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, now, this is largely being done administratively, but uh, when it comes to what the legislature is doing this year, for example, uh, we passed a law that defined what out-of-network coverage was and to make sure as networks become more important, the delivery of health care, that, uh, that we all know what it is. Locally, we've done some, some things I'm very proud of. Uh, you probably read or heard about the naming of Route 375 for Lee Von Helm. That was fun and that was nice and I'm really grateful that we were able to honor a local person. But we also named a local road for Sean Farrell who lost his life in Afghanistan. In addition to that, we added a family court judge. Uh, you'll be voting on that in a couple of weeks. Uh, we also made the Kingston City uh, Court Judge uh, full time. These are just a few of the things that we've done. Uh, we've got a lot more to do. I look forward to your questions and comments and also to hear what my colleagues have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank the Chamber and the League of Women Voters for hosting this today. I'd also like to commend my colleagues up here and my opponent, Mr. Cahill, for their service to the community. For those of you who don't know me, I live in Platakill with my girlfriend, Melanie, who's over there. My 11-year-old uh, step-granddaughter, Daniela, who I've raised since she was two weeks old, and my three-year-old son, Joshua. And I believe in giving back to our community that's been so good to me. I've started programs to raise awareness for drunk driving, promote seatbelt use, 
and recycling. I've been an Ulster County legislator since 2008, and I'm proud to tell you that I've never once voted to raise your taxes. As your assemblyman, I can assure you and promise you today that I would never vote to increase taxes. Today, I ask for your support to be your next assemblyman. Most of us here can agree that Albany is broken. There is no Republican or Democrat solution. Only bipartisanship and compromise can end the gridlock in Albany. I've worked well with both Republicans and Democrats in the county legislature to get things done. I've supported common sense legislation such as a county takeover to safety net, several fracking bans, four budgets without a property tax increase, including a property decrease next year. I was the only Republican to vote to ban harmful pesticides on county property. And I will, as your assemblyman, vote to ban fracking in New York State. New York has the highest taxes in the country, 40% higher than the national average. Our seniors upon retirement cannot afford to live here and our children seek opportunity elsewhere. Everyone in the state benefits from having a good education system. Why should the burden fall solely on the back of the property owners? Republicans and Democrats must work together for real property tax reform in Albany. Thank you all. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Frank Skortados. I want to thank the Chamber of uh, Ulster County Chamber of Commerce for putting this event together. Um, I am a father, um, a small business person, a former teacher. I taught at New York Military Academy. I live in Marlboro, which is the southernmost part of Ulster County. Some, sometimes I believe we are a little bit forgotten. <laughs> but um, I've been the assemblyman uh, for the last uh, four years and um, I'm asking for your support to get reelected. Um, as a small businessman, by the way, I've been a member of the Chamber of Commerce for at least uh, 12 years in Dutchess County. As a small businessman, I understand the importance of business. I think it's all about business. It is really businesses that create, the, that put the investments, that create jobs, that pay the bills create revenues. So I, I understand it's all about business. And I think organizations such as this one, as well as the government should cooperate together in creating the environment conducive uh, for business to grow, hire, expand, create revenues, and keep our economy moving. Uh, I think we do that uh, through tax incentives, uh, through investments, whether it's in education, whether it's in in STEM program, science, technology, engineering, math. Um, we do it uh, through some of the creative ideas our governors have put together, uh, such as Startup New York, uh, zero tax on manufacturing, uh, which were successful in including the budget. Um, and uh, of course, we also need a government that is um, smaller, smarter, transparent, um, works for the people, on behalf of the people, and that um, uh, it's, uh, it's willing to listen to the needs of our communities. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. As mentioned, my name is Sakima Green-Brown, and I am running for State Assembly in the 104th District, which covers Poughkeepsie, Lloyd, Marlboro, Beacon, and the city and the town of Newburg. Um, I'm born and raised in Poughkeepsie, here in the Hudson Valley. I then went on and graduated from West Point, served a year in Iraq, um, came back, moved back into Poughkeepsie because my mom had breast cancer, decided to come home and help my family. While being home to help my family, I also served on the school board as school board president and vice president, and I currently serve as a family advocate. Um, I've always given service to my community and wanted to do what was best for the most amount of people. I always wanted to be the voice for the people who didn't have a, vo a voice. I wanted to make sure that what we need was given, that our needs and desires and what was important in our community was heard. Um, I'm running for state assembly because it's not enough for our officials to do the minimum. 
we need to make sure that our needs here in the Hudson Valley get to Albany. We need more women and minorities. We need more action and less talk. Thank you. Member Peter Lopez, who I knew was running a little late, he is running unopposed this year. Uh, we'll keep our questions, I think, to the candidates who have opposition, but I wanted to give Peter a chance to say hi and tell you a little bit about himself for a couple minutes. Peter. Sure, thank you, Ward. And uh, this is kind of like just in time manufacturing, so I'm sorry, I just. Uh, um, so I, I just want to thank you for hosting the forum. And the chamber, uh, again, continues to be a strong advocate on many fronts. So whether it's for economic development or policy issues, and I want to congratulate the uh, ward and his staff for being so engaged. Not all chambers are engaged to this extent. I have a seven county region that I serve, and I'm Pete Lopez, Assemblyman. I have Mid-Hudson, Northern Catskills, part of Capital District, part of Southern Tier. So I do about 1,000 miles a week across a region that is, is very diverse. Um, we have some suburban areas, but much of it is, is rural. So mountains and streams, uh, small towns, farms. But if you can imagine, uh, many of the, the ills that affect inner cities uh, really are profoundly uh, um, pervasive in our rural areas. And if you look at demographics, uh, lack of educational attainment, percentage of children in poverty, other issues like that, uh, we, we have that in spades, but they're isolated. They're, they're uh, out of view, if you can, hidden by the beauty in the region. Uh, people say, how is how are folks? And when you think about it, in our region, we have three proposed power lines, three proposed natural gas lines, Common Core, Safe Act, hydrofracking, um, flood recovery, and again, the, the impacts of, of a prolonged recession. So I feel like, thank you, sir, may I have another. That's really kind of the way I look at it. And, and beyond that, and here's the frustration, as I look at Albany and Washington, when I talk to people, I use an acronym. I do 1,000 miles a week, and I use an acronym, MBWA. I learned that in my master's studies, um, Management by Wandering Around. So uh, as I do that, I stay close to people. I hear what's on their hearts and minds, and it helps me anticipate. I don't have to wait for polls. I don't have to wait for people to tell me what the priorities are because I hear them from my neighbors. So their questions are, their, their concerns, do I have a house? Can I keep it? Very basic. Uh, can I heat my home? Can I put gas in my gas tank? Can I send my kids to school? Um, those are the issues. Can I pay my property tax? So anyway, I being a red stop, I'm going to stop. But I'd be happy to talk to you folks later, and thank you for letting me join you. God bless. Thank you.